Hey friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. It is raining out here. We're not actually gonna spend a lot of time out here today. I'm just coming out here to grab some carrots because we are gonna be making a hot sauce today that requires carrots. I found two new hot sauce recipes that I'm really excited to try. A brand new cookbook. I was at my sister's house this weekend and going through her canning cookbooks. My sister used to do a ton of canning, not as much so much anymore, but she let me borrow one of her cookbooks. So we are going to make two hot sauce recipes out of her cookbooks. Plus we're gonna make some cowboy candy. And I think I want to make homemade, it is really wet out here. <laughs> I think I wanna make some homemade Italian herb blend because I don't have any of that on hand, but I have all the herbs from the garden I need that are dried and ready to go. So I think I wanna make some of that up. So I am not having to go into my pantry and grab all the different ingredients every time a recipe calls for Italian herb blend. So I'm at the carrot patch. I think I actually wanna harvest the carrots from this bed today. Last time we were out here, I was impressed with the size of carrots coming out of this bed. I'm actually gonna be harvesting all the carrots. Oh my goodness. That is the size of a store-bought carrot. I am so impressed. That one, a little bit smaller. Look at those. These are Bolero carrots that I got from Johnny Seeds. Oh, lost a carrot in the ground. I'll grab that later when I harvest the rest of them. Lost that one too. That should be enough carrots for our recipe today. Carrots are gonna add some sweetness to the hot sauce. I on accident grabbed two onions. I didn't mean to grab those, but we'll use those in the hot sauce recipes too. I just preheated the oven because we are going to be using the oven to cook the carrots. The two new recipes we're gonna be making today are out of this cookbook. It is an America's Test Kitchen cookbook. It's the foolproof preserving book, the guide to small batch jams, jellies, pickles, and condiments. I can link this down below if you're interested in these recipes. So the first one I actually wanna start with is the one that does not call for carrots, and it's the sriracha. I normally make a sriracha sauce that is a fermented sriracha sauce and this is not this you cook it and make it and do all the things in one day so i thought i would try something new here and i'm really excited about this so we need to weigh out our ingredients for both these recipes so i have my scale here i have it on pounds and ounces i'm going to double this recipe i purchased from a local farmer five pounds of red jalapenos i already washed the jalapenos, both the green and the red. And so I want to double this recipe. Oh, I need to tear my bowl first. So I'm not weighing my bowl. Okay, so now we can weigh out three pounds. These jalapenos will be for the hot sauce that uses these carrots. So I'm gonna stick these carrots there. Now it says to weigh it out before you take the stems off. So I'm gonna do that. Now I'm gonna get gloves on. Whenever you're working with hot peppers, I highly recommend getting a pair of gloves. It might not burn when you're working with them, but if you rub your eyes or anywhere on your body, you can't wash the capsaicin off with soap and you can really seriously burn yourself, especially if you're gonna work in the quantities I'm gonna be working with here. So I do need to take the stems off, and then we are gonna blend this in the blender, which I did not get out yet. I'm gonna keep all the skins and seeds and ribs in when I first initially cook it because I want hot, hot sauce. I love hot sauce, I like it to be hot, hot. I'm actually gonna taste these jalapenos because I don't know how hot they are, and I might even make them a little hotter if they're not quite hot enough. All right, woo! <clears throat> I 
no, I will not be making them any hotter. That is plenty hot for me. The first couple hot sauces I've already made this year have not been very hot. Whew. I love that flavor of red jalapenos. So yummy. But it is hot, my goodness. <laughs> so I'm gonna get these chopped up here. But back to the gloves. Highly, highly, highly recommend wearing gloves because I don't want you to burn yourself. Not worth it. Not worth it. And my mouth is still on fire, which is exactly what I like to see. That's hot. It says to work in batches when blending. So I want to go ahead and get some of these blended up. What we're gonna use to blend this up with the liquid is vinegar. And this has a lot more vinegar in it than the sriracha I usually make. For one recipe, it calls for one and a quarter cup of white distilled vinegar. I'm gonna blend this until really smooth. While this is blending, I will continue to cut the tops off these peppers. I got the pot out that I'm gonna cook the sriracha in. I'm gonna pour these peppers into here. I'm gonna get this on the stove, and then I will finish blending up the rest of the prepared peppers. These are gonna to go to the chickens. Chickens can't actually taste spiciness, and so you can give them spice, and it's actually really good for them. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take this amount of peppers, throw it in the high powered blender, and then I am going to add one and a quarter cup of white distilled vinegar. Ah! Okay, let me do that again. Okay, I'm gonna have to wipe the cutting board. I have the stove on. We need to blend up the garlic with a little bit of water. I was supposed to add the water with the jalapenos, but I think that will be fine. I'm gonna blend it up, just water and garlic together. And I'm cutting the water in half because we're supposed to cook it down and thicken the sauce. And I don't wanna to add too much water, so I'm only gonna add the water for one recipe instead of the water for two recipes. This is my homegrown garlic in the little garlic pucks. And now it's nice and smooth and smells fantastic. Get this in here. Now this recipe calls for sugar, fish sauce, and salt, as well as what we just added. I don't like fish sauce. Josh doesn't like fish sauce. Now Josh is probably not gonna be eating this. This was a quarter cup of brown sugar, but I will. And I don't like fish sauce that much. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the fish sauce out. The next thing we need to add is salt. And that is all the ingredients. We're gonna simmer this for a good 20 to 30 minutes until it thickens up nicely.
If you have someone that lives in your home that has asthma or trouble, any sort of breathing troubles, hot sauce is something that I probably wouldn't make on a day that they are home because the, even just from the blending process, it can get pretty powerful in here. Plus you put it on the stove and you start cooking it with vinegar, the fumes can be pretty intense. I enjoy the fumes, but I don't struggle with any sort of respiratory issue. So just a warning for you that if you have a loved one or a pet or something that struggles with respiratory, that's something that you might want to keep in mind. So now we're gonna go back to the first recipe when we went and go picked the carrots and we are gonna actually roast this hot sauce. This is one of the reasons why I really wanted to try this one. I'm gonna go get some new gloves on because I've never made a hot sauce where you roast it in the oven before you make it. I've always made them on the stove. So this is gonna be really fun. So I've got my peppers here, which I do need to measure out by weight. And this is a smaller quantity recipe. So let's see, six, 12. One recipe calls for 12 ounces of red jalapenos. So I am just gonna make as much as I have these red jalapenos here. So if I have one and a half recipes worth of red jalapenos, that's what I'm gonna do, one and a half recipes. I'm gonna use this so I don't dirty up another bowl. We'll just use this to weigh. I'm gonna tear this. That's one recipe's worth. That's two recipes worth. Three recipes worth. and four recipes worth. Okay, so we're quadrupling this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tops off these jalapenos as well. And again, it says to weigh it out and then cut the tops off, so I'm just following the recipe. And right here, I've got, ooh, I'm getting garlic all over, a cookie sheet with parchment. It has a little bit of the sauce from the blender. I'm not worried about that because it's all the same ingredients. I'm gonna get these red jalapenos onto the baking sheet and we are going to, the recipe says to broil them, but I had the oven set to 425 degrees and I'm going to roast them. The recipe calls for one shallot per recipe. I don't have shallots, but I have red onions, so I'm gonna go ahead and substitute this one kind of medium-ish onion for the shallot. I'm thinking that about a quarter of this onion is the equivalent of about one shallot's worth. And I'm just going to roughly chop this, get this on the baking sheet. And then we need one carrot per recipe. And this is probably the equivalent of an average size store carrot. These ones are a little bit on the smaller side. So I'm gonna put these five carrots in this recipe. If these were not homegrown carrots, I would peel them. But because they're homegrown, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the peels on. I just realized after rereading my recipe that it calls for two ounces of habaneros per recipe. So I need eight ounces more peppers. Well, I don't have habaneros. And when I was reading this recipe, this is what I was planning on doing was just adding more peppers. But when I did my initial <laughs> measurement, I forgot to calculate that in. So I'm gonna go through these green jalapenos. Some of them in here are pretty red. So I'm gonna use these gonna go through and grab the most ripe ones. A red jalapeno is just 
a ripe jalapeno. A green jalapeno is a not ripe jalapeno. Oh, you know what I have? You know what I'm gonna use? I've got those in there, I can use those. I have from the garden, some of my own homegrown red peppers. I've got cayenne peppers, Chinese five color peppers, and my own homegrown red jalapenos. So we are gonna use these instead. I'm gonna try to grab the cayenne peppers first because I think those are gonna have a little bit more heat for me. I also have in here peach peppers, so I can put those in there if I don't quite have enough of the red ones. And there we go, that's eight ounces, perfect. I've been saving those to make hot sauce, and so that worked out great. What I do is as I bring hot peppers into the house, this is just one of a couple bags I have, I wash them, I cut the tops off, and then I was throwing them in here for just a time as this. I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil just so that these roast up really nicely. beautiful is that now we do need to add garlic and roast the garlic too but my garlic is already peeled in, in little pucks it's not going to take as long to roast as these veggies are so halfway through the roasting process I will add the garlic onto there so now we've got two of our hot sauces going let's get our cowboy candy going for the cowboy candy we need to weigh out again three pounds of jalapenos and I have two or five ish pounds starting of jalapenos here so I will make one, let's see, get this on here, pounds. I have not made cowboy candy in two years because two years ago I made such a big batch that I didn't have to make it for a while. And this is the year I need to make it. I'm not gonna quite make as much as I did two years ago because I think I made 10 pounds total or some crazy amount of cowboy candy. If you're wondering what cowboy candy is, it's a sweet pickle jalapeno and it's so good. It's good on burgers and pizza crackers and cream cheese. It makes a fantastic appetizer. You just get a block of cream cheese out, open a jar of this, pour it over the top, eat it with a cracker and cream cheese, and your family will love it if they like spicy things. That's the biggest thing is it is spicy, but because it has so much sugar in it, it does help kind of balance out the sugar and sweetness. Now, I need to cut the tops off and cut these into, traditionally they're cut into rounds. Well, I was watching Rachel from that 1870s homestead many years ago and she made it, and she made it into little dices instead of rounds. And I wanna try that for the first time this year. On my KitchenAid, I have my food processor attachment. I've never used this attachment. This is a chopping attachment as opposed to a slicing one. I just hooked it up for the first time so we're gonna see how it works together. I tested it, it turns on. I'll show you what it looks like. So it's got this cubed insert and then you put the blade on top and then you put the lid on and that is supposed to chop things for you. 
I've never used it. I've seen it used. Rachel from that 1870s homestead uses it and it worked really well for her. So let's try it. I'm cutting the top off. They are chopped into little dices. Well, that made that job exponentially easier. We need to make a brine for the cowboy candy and that is two cups of apple cider vinegar and four cups of white sugar. along with salt. A lot of cowboy candy recipes have things like turmeric and mustard and ginger. And I like to make it just like this, very simple. Let the sweet, the vinegar and the jalapeno flavor just really shine through. So we need the sugar to dissolve. And then we're gonna cook the peppers for a couple minutes. I think it is time to add the garlic to our sauce that's in the oven. Our hot sauce is roasted and done. So we can get this blended up. How beautiful is that? The carrots are soft, the onions are soft, the peppers are soft. Now the recipe says to de-seed this. I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna blend this up and run it through a fine mesh sieve, which the recipe says to do anyway. I want the heat from the jalapenos from the seeds in the sauce. So we are just gonna blend this up without de-seeding it. I think there's only one more ingredient we add to this hot sauce, and that is the vinegar. So we're gonna use our high powered blender again so that it can be as smooth as possible. We can break it down as much as possible so that when we run it through a fine mesh sieve, we can get as much of that pulp out as possible. I'm gonna work in batches because I did double this recipe. So I'm gonna put about half of the roasted peppers, onions, and carrots in here. Oh, there's two more ingredients we're gonna add. I just remembered the second one. It's already kind of spicy in here. So we've got our peppers in here. Now I quadrupled this recipe, so that means I need to add four total cups of vinegar. I'll start with two, because we're working in with half of it. Oh, there's another, there's a third ingredient I just remembered. brown sugar. I didn't wash the blender because it had basically the same ingredients in it, so I'm not really worried about washing. So this is what the consistency of the sauce is looking like. We're going to run it through a fine mesh sieve, it smells incredible. 
It definitely has a nice thickness to it because of the carrot. The carrot adds quite a bit of body, which is amazing. I'm gonna run this through the sieve and then I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna add the salt, the sugar, the vinegar, the roasted peppers and blend. So here is the pulp here. We, I do have a little bit more I need to work through. I am gonna give this to the chickens because I have enough of this pulp, but you can absolutely dehydrate this pulp and run it through the dehydrator and use it as a seasoning. But I have enough of it right now that I don't need to have any more. So I'm gonna give that to the chickens. It is good for them to have peppers. So this will be a good win-win for me and a good win-win for the chickens. Look how beautiful that hot sauce is. It's thick, it's rich, it's got great silky texture and body to it. Our cowboy candy is now ready to be jarred up. I went ahead and turned it off so we can get this off the stove and get it into some jars. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of the juice at the bottom of the jar just to help prevent air bubbles. And then I like to pack them mostly with the peppers. So I do have a sieve here and I'm gonna just sift out some of the peppers. I'm gonna jar up this cowboy candy in pints and in half pints. It's so funny, the longer I've been canning, you evolve, right? I used to can almost everything in quarts and pints. And the longer I'm doing this, the more I'm enjoying pints and half pints. And this year I've even broken out four ounce jars. Never did I used to can in four ounce jars, but this year I've been enjoying having one, a more variety of sizes on my pantry shelf of the same thing. And there's a couple of reasons why I've been enjoying having smaller jars on my pantry shelf. One is generally when I open a jar of whatever it is, whether it's jam or marinara sauce or whatever it might, salsa, whatever it might be, I don't always use the whole jar. And I guess marinara sauce, I usually do use a whole jar, but sometimes you don't want a whole quart of it. A pint is all you need. And so what I've been enjoying is having smaller jars on my pantry shelf so that when I open them and then they end up in my refrigerator, they're taking up less space. Another reason why I've been enjoying smaller jars is because I like to gift a lot of what I make away. It makes for a beautiful, quick and easy gift. If I am going to someone's home and I need a housewarming gift, if there's a birthday dinner I'm going to, or just even Christmas gifts, I love giving my home jarred things away. And if I have a bunch of smaller jars, then what I can do is I can make a more variety gift basket or gift bag of a bunch of different things I have on my pantry shelf to gift instead of giving a bunch of larger jars, I can kind of gift the gift of variety. We are water bath canning the cowboy candy, so I'm gonna get some water on to boil. And I'm gonna get a towel at the bottom because I'm just using this big stock pot to water bath can. And we're not canning the other two hot sauces. Our sriracha is done. I'm excited to try this next to the other hot sauce and see what it's like. There's so much vinegar in it. When I think of store-bought sriracha, I don't think of a ton of vinegar. I'm gonna go ahead and try it anyway, right now. I've got two spoons, because I'm gonna try the carrot one. Wow, I really like that. It's hot. It's vinegary, but not overpowering. There's four cups of vinegar because I tri quadrupled that recipe. Oh, it's hot. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I 
I think the carrot really balances it out. You can kind of taste the sweetness from the brown sugar, but barely. That is a very, very, very well-balanced hot sauce. Now let's try this sriracha. And it's hot, which I'm glad, because the couple hot sauces I've made this year so far are not very hot. Oh, wow. Okay. That is not as vinegary as I thought it was going to be. It's really good. Now, both these recipes said that the longer they sit, the flavors tend to develop and deepen. I have noticed that when I make hot sauce, that when I have a hot sauce that's sat on my pantry shelf for a year or two, that it really, the flavors just, it's better. I had two-year-old sriracha that I had made, the one that I had fermented, boiled it, canned it, and after two years, it definitely tasted better than when I bottled it. This is really good. So what I'm gonna do is strain this. I'm gonna use the same colander and everything. I'm okay if there's a little bit of cross contamination with the two hot sauces because just a little bit, you won't be able to know that there's a little bit of carrot in the sriracha or anything like that. Oh! What I end up doing is I let this colander just strain by itself for a little bit because I remembered I want to get my cowboy candy on the stove to water bath can. I am using just my 30 quart pot. You can use any pot to water bath can as long as you can cover the jars with two inches of water. So I end up having to put a little bit more water in here and I do have a dish cloth on the bottom of the pot because I don't want my glass jars touching the bottom of the pot that increases the risk of them breaking because they're so close to the heating element. So once I've got my water in here, I turn the stove on and get it to boil. And then this is the pulp from the sriracha and I do save this and dehydrate this and turn it into sriracha powder. I almost bought the other day at Trader Joe's sriracha powder. You can buy it at the store. <laughs> and then I thought, oh my goodness, I'm gonna be making sriracha here in a couple days. Don't buy it. Go ahead and make your own because basically that's what this is here. So this consistency in the pot is really good. That was the first stuff I strained. And then the second stuff I strained was a little bit on the thinner side. So I'm combining the two and I end up putting this back on the stove to reduce and thicken. If I make this recipe again, which I probably will because it was so easy and it's super delicious, I've been enjoying it, is I would put just a couple tablespoons of water in the blender, just enough to get it blending, not the third of a cup I believe that it called for because it did have to cook down for quite some time in order to get to the consistency I wanted. What I'm gonna do for the powder is I'm gonna take this pulp and spread it out on my dehydrator mat and I put it in the dehydrator at about 105 degrees for about 12 hours and then I powder it up and it is absolutely delicious stuff. It's basically just pepper pulp and garlic, so yummy. Now here, there, these are the green jalapenos that I didn't end up using for the cowboy candy that I want to use to make some salsa verde later this year once all my tomatillos come in from the garden and some other jalapeno hot sauce and so I don't have the time to do it on this afternoon so I end up just topping them and tossing these in the freezer for a later date and they're already washed and everything so when I'm ready to use them they will be ready to go and on this day I don't know why I had this idea of doing the Italian herb blend because I totally forget about it. I'm in pepper mode and the Italian herb blend ends up going for a different day because it just doesn't happen. So I've got my cowboy candy there boiling and I can set the timer now for the proper time to process so that it can get all nice and processed and then it can be pantry stable. My brother has already claimed a couple of these jars. It was funny, we went to dinner the other night and he said, do you have my cowboy candy? And I totally forgot to bring it to him. And so he will be getting a surprise on his doorstep in the next couple days. So here I am just jarring up these hot sauce. This is the carrot pepper sauce. And I am not gonna water bath can these because this is not a canning recipe. So I'm just getting a jar or a lid on the jar with a ring and these will go into the refrigerator. I did originally jar it up in a quart size jar, but I thought, you know, I think I'd rather have them in smaller jars. Here is the 
sriracha and I'm putting it in a bunch of different size jars too for the same reason I stated before. If I decide to gift it, I've got a smaller jar. If I put this in my fridge and when I put this in my fridge, it's going to take up less space in my fridge in my kitchen versus, you know, a big quart jar. I don't need a quart jar of hot sauce. I mean, I will go through a quart of hot sauce, but I don't need that stored in my fridge. I can use one of these smaller jars. So I'm just getting a ring on them, making sure the ring is clean just so that that vinegar hot sauce isn't sitting next to the metal ring. I got some of these jars this year. I needed to pick up a couple jars and they, I don't know what brand they were, but for some reason the rings don't like to go on them as well. They were definitely a more affordable jar and I think I was paying for that in the quality of the jar. So our hot sauce is done or our cowboy candy is done. I've let the cowboy candy sit with the lid off and the stove off for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, and we're gonna get the cowboy candy out of the canner. And then I already have dinner done for today. I'm doing a crock pot series, and dinner, I got started before we got started in the kitchen with all of the hot sauce goodies. So I don't even, well, I have to boil some pasta, so I just put some water on to boil so we can get the pasta cooked up. And here I have a sausage and pepper pink sauce ready for dinner tonight once we have pasta going. And then I'll probably open a can of green beans. We got a lot of hot sauce done today. I'm letting these cool. I could put them in the refrigerator now. We got four pints of our roasted carrot red jalapeno hot sauce. We got one pint plus two half pints plus a pint and a half of our sriracha. Definitely not a year's worth, but I'm excited to have these on my pantry shelf. I probably will use this one like Sriracha. It's got just a nice heat to it. Both of these are delicious, and I will make both of these again. We got two pints plus three half pints of our cowboy candy that are in dices instead of slices. This is the dinner here. I'm going to let the, well, these are cool now, so I can pop these in the fridge. The recipe does say that they are gonna taste better if they sit for a few weeks before you have them, but I already think they're delicious. One of them will go into my inside fridge and the other ones are gonna go into my outside fridge because those are not canning recipes. They are very high acid, but I'm following the recipe and it's not a canning recipe. And they should be good for six months, no problem, it said in the recipe in the refrigerator, if not longer, because there is so much vinegar in them. I wanted to show you this cookbook again. If you are interested in this cookbook, I can link it down below. I just saw those two recipes in here that I wanted to make the two hot sauces, and I'm very happy with them. This is a fun cookbook. It's more of a, it's not like my other favorite canning cookbook that's like a whole comprehensive canning cookbook that it's gonna be able to give you all the recipes and guidelines you need to do, basically do any sort of canning. This is more like fun recipes. And like right here, raspberry chocolate jam, nectarine cardamom preserves, and they are smaller recipes. Fig balsamic jam, which I have made. So if you make these little fancy recipes, you don't have a huge quantity. And so this is really fun. I'm gonna sit down and flip through this. I was at my sister's house this weekend. I just found these two recipes and I was like, I'm gonna make them and I wanna see if there's any other recipes out of here I want to make. I actually, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I noticed that there is a red pepper jelly, what looks like that on the front. I was actually scouring the internet for a red pepper jelly recipe and I didn't find what I wanted to use. So I'm gonna have to see if the one in this cookbook is one I might wanna try next. I was thinking about doing that today, but clearly we got enough stuff done. Thank you for being here. If you are interested in all things food, from growing food to preserving food to making dinner, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you along the journey. If you enjoyed this video, I can put a couple of my other videos here you can enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.